my lovelies, welcome back to Cafecito Podcast. I welcome you guys. Get your coffee, your tea, your liquor, your beer, your wine, whatever it is that you drink. Take a seat, relax, and enjoy the ride. What we're bringing to the table today is the conversation that is highly, highly talked about. It is something that those of you guys that are in the practice, um, I'm sure you guys have, you know, it's one of the categories that uh, gets a lot of attention, right? So might as well uh, face it head on and bring this subject up about relationships and partnerships and the importance of it, right? And as we continue this conversation, we're going to be touching different different branches, right, that are of the same tree when it comes to partnerships and relationships and the importance of every single branch, right, that is part of that tree. And we start with something that is a practitioner of the practice and the profession that I'm in. It is something that I want to say the past five years I've noticed. And when you are in a profession where you deal with people on everyday basis from many different people from different walks of life, uh, different religions, different um, ethnicities, different race, different belief system, we have a tendency of picking up on things that are becoming what now people call trends, right? And as an example, I want to say about seven, eight years ago, um, people were more so inclined to seek out spiritual guidance, more so to do with health and finances. Um, And then fast forward five years ago, it was more so to do with romance, with love and self-love. And all of that is intertwined, right? Because it's love. And so us as practitioners, when we start to see these, you know, like I said, sort of trends, what they call nowadays, what we observe is almost this momentum uh, that starts to unfold where it could be kind of predictory to see where the collective is going and what's taking place importance in their lives. So like I said, five years ago, I started picking up on these trends of people primarily focusing on relationships and love and finding love and, uh, you know, then a little fast forward, you start getting into like self-love and and things like that. I think I've been noticing that the past, what, three years that uh, you could go to any social media platform and you hear everyone talk about self-love and um, the discovery of yourself, et cetera. But it all comes down to, like I said, I don't want to say a trend, but it's like that's the word that comes to mind that you can describe where where the collective mind is going or the experiences that we're experiencing at this point in time. And that's the reason why I'm bringing this conversation to the table, because I think it's very important and it's even, I guess, frowned upon certain subjects that I'm going to talk about, but I think it's necessary. So... From what I've observed, um, like I said, the past few years is people not being okay with the idea of being alone. And when I say that, you know, a lot of people confuse being alone with being lonely, and that's two different, completely different vibrations. Being alone is necessary. And if you are a spiritual being and you are someone that, you know, spirituality takes center stage in your life, then you know the importance of this. But if you are just, you know, 
one of the many that just deals with life as it comes without much direction. And again, there's no judgment in that. Um, we are all brought up and raised very differently and our everyday life and our routines are very different and we have very different walks of life. So again, there's no judgment there. But what I'm saying is that being alone has this like negative, you know, negative uh, stigma. And I think that that's something that is very crucial in any type of spirituality. Um, because you, when you are going through a spiritual journey or when you're first beginning your spiritual journey, and like I spoke in a previous episode, uh, when it comes to spiritual awakenings, uh, you're kind of forced into experiencing mm -hmm uh, the, the, the feeling of feeling what it is to be alone. And the reason for that is because you're not connecting and you're not vibing with everyone the way you did in the past, because your consciousness is on a complete whole different ball game, a different level. And, but I think that when we speak about being alone, there is this negative, you know, stigma uh, about it. And and that's not just to say a generalization. Um, if we want to pinpoint it, we can take it back to, you know, women, for example, a woman that is, you know, single and she's been single for a while, especially, and I'm speaking for myself in the experience, um, my background is Mexican. So in the Mexican culture, it is almost like uh something weird, something odd, it doesn't happen, right? After a certain age, they expect you to have, you know, a partner or to want to build a life with a partner. And that's just how it is culturally. So then they see this woman that, you know, is, you know, is single. And it almost has this like negative stigma to it, or it's like, oh, it must be something like she must be really hard to deal with. Um, everything that, everything that would explain why she's single has to be negative. And like I said, there is this crucial need for understanding of the difference of being lonely or being alone and being lonely are two different things. And like I said, if you are in the spiritual community or if you are going through a spiritual path, and on your journey, then you know the importance that it is. I'm sure you've experienced it at some point in time. Um, but it's almost as if like the everyday person has this fear, right? This fear of being alone. And from my observations as a practitioner, as a spiritual advisor, um, everyone has different reasons to fear that. I think a lot of it has to do culturally. Uh, for others, it has to do with, you know, the way they were brought up. Um, a lot of it has to do with, you know, the family's influence and, you know, what they think. Um, but it is important to have some time to find yourself, because when we're talking about relationships, it is a partnership. It is, you know, you get used to being around a, a person and sharing your personal space and them getting to know you and you getting to know them. And through this journey of being in that relationship or in that partnership with that person, a lot of what you liked, a lot of who you were is no longer resonating to who you are. And once that person is no longer in your life, you will evolve and you perhaps will not be into the things that you were into when you were in that relationship. And that's okay. It's part of, like I said, growing and evolving. And I think what I see and what, I, what I'm constantly shown is that people have this fear of being alone and that's why there is a tendency of jumping from one relationship to another. And every relationship in our lives has a purpose, whether it's a two-day 
you know, escapade, <laughs> a whirlwind romance that you experience, whether it's a two month, whether it's a week, whether it's 10 years, every person that comes into your life is teaching you something. There is a lesson in that connection, in that relationship that relates back to who you are. Why do I say this? Because oftentimes I hear people say, I don't know why I keep attracting the same type of energy. It's just, it's completely, obviously a different body, but it's the same energy. And that speaks more to you than to the people you're choosing. Do you get what I'm saying? Because you're the one that is not only attracting that type of energy, but you're also embracing it and very willing to embrace it if you keep dealing with the same type of energy. So on a psychological level, it has more to do with you as a person and what you are refusing to learn. And this is why I say that when it comes to relationships, if you're coming out of a relationship, if you've been out of a relationship, if you recently just be became single, the best advice I can give you is give yourself some time to process it all. Just like, you know, when you are in first beginning a relationship, it is it takes a process. It's a process for you to get to know that person. And even at that, we don't completely get to know them completely, right? Some people may surprise us. <laughs> and what I'm saying is that Everything in life is a process. You cannot rush it. You cannot force it. You can't, you have to surrender to that process. So even if you're at the point where you recently came out of a relationship and you're feeling all down and all your friends are telling you, you should go out, you should go have fun, you know, keep yourself busy, though it is true. And I know that they come from a loving place. Um, perhaps being open or wanting to deal with other people is not a good a good time to do that because when you come out of a really just as it took the effort and energy and getting to know that person and sharing a life with them it's going to be a process as well when there's a breakup or a separation and though it is at a different extent it is a mourning process because you are mourning the loss of that relationship and not just the relationship with that person but also it's kind of like mourning that part of who you were because you will no longer be who you were at that point in time. So this is where being alone is very important because through this process, through processing, you know, the 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 mourning of that relationship or that relationship that came to an end, you're also reacquainting yourself or reconnecting with yourself with your true authentic self. And through this process, you're learning, you're going to have days, right, where you wake up and you're extremely motivated and you're like, I got this. And then there's going to be days where you feel like you are in the ocean and the emotions come as waves. You know, it could be a little wave. It could be a huge wave where it becomes very overwhelming. And the whole point of that is to not run away from those feelings, to not hide from those feelings or suppress them but to actually embrace them, to actually sit with that feeling for a bit. Don't stay there, you know, three days, but acknowledge it. Acknowledge it and acknowledge what that relationship taught you. What were the lessons that came along with that person? What did you learn about yourself? Because when we talk about relationships, relationships in, in, in the grander scale of things, a relationship is, in essence, a part of who you are, right? You're sharing your life with someone, ex you know, exterior to you. But you are having that experience with that person. So it is a part of you in that moment in time. So this is, like I said, this is the reason why it's so important to process that, to give yourself the time to mourn that relationship that came to an end, to sit with the, you know, the feelings of it, to acknowledge them, not to stay there, like I said, for three, four days, but to acknowledge that you have every single right to feel what you're feeling because that person went from you dealing with them on everyday basis to not dealing with them at all. 
of course, it's going to be a major emotional, you know, kind of toll and roller coaster. But what I see often is that people don't give themselves that time. And instead, they run from one relationship to another to kind of escape the feeling of processing the loss of that relationship. And that creates a whole nother, you know, uh, a whole nother type of chaotic energy. But to be, I, and this is something I want to stress, to, to be alone and to be lonely are two different things. And the, the best example I can give is, you know, for, for instance, when I'm consulting with a client and the saddest thing for me on a personal level that kind of takes a toll on me is when the client is in a very unhealthy relationship and they often feel, and this is something I often hear, um, that they say, that they feel alone, that they feel lonely in that relationship. And and to me, that's very heartbreaking because what I think about in that moment in time when that client is sharing those those emotions with me is, you know, I could never choose to be in a relationship where the partner in, in, instead of enhancing my life experience is taking from me, taking from me to the point where I feel like I am alone in that relationship and I am facing the obstacles and the lessons and everything and just feeling like I'm dealing with it alone. Then what is the purpose of being in that relationship, in that partnership? And that's where, like I said, that whole chaotic energy starts to take place. Why? Because everyone does it for many different reasons. Some for status, for what family may say, friends may say, others because they feel responsible or because of guilt or because of, you know, often I hear because of the kids. And to me, it's kind of like it, it triggers certain memories, right? Or certain experiences that I went through. And it's like, you know, sometimes I understand that as parents, you want to do what's best for your kids and sometimes holding on to a relationship that perhaps is not that good uh, or perhaps is very toxic. And you try to hold on to it because you're trying to cultivate in your kids the family dynamic. But sometimes you do more damage being in that, you know, dynamic that is very toxic, that the partner, you know, is abusive or mentally abusive or uh, just has a tendency of degrading the partner or whatever the situation is. And when I tell my clients this, you got to think if you're doing it for your kids, then you should have been out long ago because you're teaching them that that's that type of love. And believe it or not, we are condi conditioned as kids, what we see, how we give and receive love are the people around us or are, are knit or circle. They're teaching us that that's how we give and receive love. So going back to the conversation of the need to be alone, when you come out of a relationship, you have to process what was the lesson, what, what was it that, you know, that that relationship brought to you. And it also is almost like a self-reflective moment in time, realizing, well, I had a lot to do with choosing that person. Why did I, you know, choose them? Why did I allow them to do this and this and that? And you will come to the realization that a lot of that has to do with our insecurities. A lot of that has to do with our, you know, conditioning in early childhood and the whole purpose of dating or being in a relationship or in a partnership is to evolve in that relationship, right? And if it came to an end, then you should evolve from that energy. And this is something that, like I said, it, it's almost like being alone is something that is frowned upon or it's something that, you know, we tend to run away from for many different reasons. But it is important to give yourself that space, to give yourself that time um, and to heal, especially those of you guys that are coming out of very traumatic experiences. Trauma, you know, whether you convince yourself that you can get over it, it is in your brain, it, in your subconscious. 
it is in your body if it was physical abuse, you know, and, and this is something that we have to heal and that we have to uh, be able to process, give ourselves the time to process it, to be able to come out at the other end, more empowered, more loving of yourself and who you are and knowing your worth and knowing what it is that you seek in a partner. And this is why also when we talk about relationships, a lot of people never, 90% of the people I deal with, they do not want to give themselves the time because they don't want to heal. And yes, healing is a process and it is painful, especially if you're coming out of a five, seven, eight year relationship or even longer. Um, it's painful. But in that, you have to learn to heal yourself, to put yourself together, to become more empowered, to become more aware of what you're seeking, what you're willing to put up with and what you're not willing to put up anymore. And it is a healing process. And often people just don't want to deal with that. They just don't want to heal. You have people that are carrying trauma from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and they go into relationships or partnerships where they continuously keep psychologically abusing their partner. Um, and it has nothing to do with what the partner has done to them. It has more to do with what they've experienced in the past and they haven't healed from that. So they're still carrying that in their energy and it is reflecting on their treatment towards their partner. Um, and this is why it's very important to do healing, to give yourself the time to be alone with yourself. You know, it's kind of like when I talk to clients that are in the manifestation process and I tell them, listen, if you cannot, you know, spend quality time with yourself, if you cannot or do not want to be with yourself, what makes you think that another person is going to want to share your energy if you yourself don't even like you? And I know it's like, it's a ha ha, like, ah, oh, it's so funny, but, but it's the truth. There, there is reality to that. There is weight behind that statement, you know, um, like I said, even being in relationships, I know people have a tendency also of like uh, changing their styles or depending on the person they're dating, they kind of mold themselves into that person. So then they come out of this relationship and they feel completely lost. They feel completely tuned out from who they are. And you have to give yourself that time to reconnect with yourself, to find things that motivate you, to find things that you're passionate about. and to reconnect with yourself. And it is important to do that because you want the next person that you're going to share, you know, a relationship with or a partnership with or your life with. You want them to fall for who you are, who you are genuinely, authentically. And see, that's the thing about jumping from one relationship to another, that you never have a moment in time to tune into you, to the I am, and you kind of present yourself with glimpses or parts of the past relationships that you've had. And this is sad because this, like I said, this is something that I often see. Um, and you would think, you know, like I said, looking at, you know, the clients that I consult with and the people that come to me, I am constantly like thrown aback when I see people as an example, a person that you would consider aesthetically beautiful, um, have so much insecurity surrounding being alone. I uh, have so many insecurities about just not not liking their energy though they don't tell you that their behavior and their actions speak very loudly about that 
And again, this is a space of no judgment. This is a space where we're going to bring up conversations that sometimes are going to be uncomfortable, but it's so that you can think about it, you know, give, give, give that a little time, sit with that conversation and ultimately make the decisions that are best, that resonate best to who you are and who you want to be. Because every single day we are changing, we are transcending, we are evolving. If you're not doing that, then you're doing life all wrong <laughs> because that's what we're here for. And um, part of this has a lot to do, like, uh, for example, clients that come to me when they are in the manifestation process a lot um, often, you know, have the desire and want and need to manifest a loving, healthy relationship. And, you know, there's this time and place where I give them an exercise where I tell them, you know, for a specific amount of months, uh, you're not going to be dealing with like absolutely no one. Your intention when you wake up, your intention is not to look for someone like that's not your intention. That's not what you're thinking about. It is your primal, like primal need and focus to focus on yourself, not the outside world, but you. And in this process, they often find that people start to become much more attracted to them. Even people that, you know, necessarily were not used to like people going up to them to try and, you know, get their attention or get their number or whatnot. And, and they're often surprised and they're like, I don't understand, like, you know, I'm focusing myself in other things. I'm not focusing on that, but it seems like people are being much more attracted to me. And I said, yeah, because you're taking it back to the root, which is yourself. You're teaching yourself or relearning to teach yourself that you are what's important. You are what possesses everything that you could ever want. Anything that you could ever need is within you. And when you start to tune into you and you start to reconnect and kind of disconnect from, you know, our highly sensitive ego that is so needed to, to be very aware, self-conscious about how other people perceive us, you become more empowered. Therefore, your energy, you're vibrating from a higher, from a, from a higher frequency. And those that challenge or those that, you know, have difficulty with following certain instructions, um, will often find themselves in a relationship very shortly after, um, dealing with, you know, with those exercises and they try to go the other way and they embrace those connections that come through. And then they're surprised why it doesn't work out. And this is something that, you know, if you've listened to my other videos or the other episodes, um, you know, the, 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 the conversation of you will never be able to attract anything other than who you are or anything other than your energy. So I'll give you as an example, those that try to go around the courses that I'm teaching them and they want to convince themselves that they could do it another way. So they don't tell me, but then later on, I find out that they're talking to someone that they had met, let's say three weeks into the lessons. Right. And they're like, it must be it because it's by vi I'm vibrating very high and, you know, and, and I'm over here sitting back like, okay, okay. I'll, I'll let, the, I'll let you, you know, create your own reality. Um, I don't, in that moment in time, I, I'm already aware that they are listening to the lessons and, and maybe taking some, some insight, but not necessarily practicing them. And then they're surprised when it doesn't work out. And then I tell them, okay, so let me give you, you know, let me, let, let me give you a, a moment in time to take a bit, a step back and look at your surroundings. If you, obviously everything that you have done up until this point hasn't worked out when it comes to relationships for you, um, then there is the only way to see or experience a different outcome is by doing something different. 
So you try something different momentarily, but then you go back to your old habits or behaviors, right? So your state of mind is still the same. You're still vibrating from the same frequency. What makes you think that you're going to be able to attract a healthy, loving relationship if you're still in that same vibration? You're not going to be able to because like attracts like. You cannot attract anything other than who you are or what you are, what you're vibrating to. So they'll find a person that immediately, you know, the chemistry is off the charts. Everything is going great. As we all know, the beginning stages of a relationship or connecting with someone, everything, everything's going to be fine, right? Because we're not challenged because we're trying to put our face foot or our, our best foot forward um, until it gets real. So they're hot and cold with them or whatnot. And it's like, because you yourself, are unaware of what you want. And they're like, what do you mean? I know that I want a serious relationship. I know that, you know, I'm looking for something serious and monogamous. But yet when I ask them, how was their first, second or third date? It's the opposite of a serious, healthy, loving, monogamous relationship. So it's like, how can you expect to attract someone that is going to take you seriously when you yourself are not taking yourself seriously because you're telling me you want a long-term relationship yet you're okay if they put you in the category of a one-night stand. That's the complete opposite of what you're telling me you want. Therefore, that's telling me that you are willing to sacrifice what you want, right? So that you can accommodate their needs. And you cannot manifest in that in that way. You cannot manifest in that form. Yes, you may bring more people to you, right? But they're going to be vibrating from the same frequency that you are. And this is why, you know, like I said, the importance of shadow work is something that is, I highly encourage everyone to do. Even if you're not a practitioner, like you should do shadow work. Why? Because there's aspects to ourselves that at a very young age or in childhood or even growing up, we were meant to feel different or we were meant to feel uh, like that was a aspect of ourselves that we needed to hide or that we need to, you know, pull away from or, you know, I'll give you a very short example, masculinity. You know, I've dealt with a lot of clients that have this ego and this macho thing going on and that's not really who they are, but they were conditioned that because you're a boy in early childhood, you don't cry, you don't express your feelings, like you just keep it to yourself. So they start to grow up with this incredible fear of showing any type of emotion. And then those are the ones that have the most trauma when it comes to processing emotions, because, you know, it can get out of hand real quick or it can get physical because they don't know how to act or how to process those emotions. Or I get, you know, um, their partner will complain. Well, I, 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 it just seems like I can never guess what's going on in their head because they just don't, you know, they, I don't know them. I don't know how they think. I don't know their process. Like, and it's because of that. So we have to do shadow work. We have to work on ourselves. We have to see and be aware of what triggers us and the reason why it triggers us. Um, because there's, it, it's, there's always something that fundamentally goes to the root of what is being triggered. And this is why, you know, healing and doing shadow work is very important because in shadow work, it's not the separation of that aspect of who you are. It's the integration of it and the owning of, yes, you know, I was overly sensitive as a kid and I was continuously told to shut up or that I would talk a lot. So then I grew up feeling like I couldn't talk a lot because people would judge me for it. So then you have people that are extremely shy or people that just don't feel the need to speak up because the moment they do, they feel like they're being criticized or judged. That's shadow work that needs to happen in that aspect. Why? Because this power or this person feels um, instead of empowered, they feel debilitated because they feel like they cannot express how they're feeling or what they're thinking out of fear of others or the judgment of others. Um, so again, shadow work is something that is substantially important. 
And it goes back to the connection of those of you guys that are trying to manifest a healthy, loving relationship. How are you expecting to manifest something that you've never experienced in the past when you yourself are lacking love for yourself? This is why we have a lot of, you know, people that are willing to look the other way when it comes to red flags, or you stay longer in a relationship that you should because of fear of, I don't want to say something that's going to trigger them that is going to push them away because then they're going to like not want to be with me anymore. So you'd rather be a yes man, or you'd rather be a doormat. Um, and all of that goes back to the importance of shadow work and healing. Because you are divine. You are godly. That is your nature. That is who you are. That is a part of who you are. You and the cosmos are not disconnected. Everything that the universe is made of is what you're made of. So therefore, you can manifest and you can experience any type of experience or any type of life or any type of situation that you want to experience in your life. But it starts with, do you believe? Do you feel you're worthy? And the moment you start doing that shadow work, the moment you start doing that healing, you will come to the realization of truly how powerful you are and how deserving you are of whatever it is that you're trying to experience or whatever it is that you're trying to manifest in your life. And again, we go back to that of understanding doing the shadow work and doing our healing. It also will teach us in that process why we choose certain partners or why we are automatically attracted to certain types of partners. And it has a lot to do with, again, whatever it is that you need to heal, whatever aspect that you need to heal, as you continue to heal, as you continue to do shadow work, your love for yourself starts to grow. And that's where your standards start to go high. That's when you are very aware that your time is precious. You become more aware that you deserve more than, you know, just a casual, let me swing by late at night um, or, you know, Netflix and chill or <laughs> any of these things that are like now people are really not trying to put effort into, you know, courting someone. Um, and the reason for that is because women and, and not just women, men as well, you guys have completely dropped the ball, uh, when it comes to standards and, you know, it's important to know your standards. It's important to know what you expect and how you expect to be treated and anything that is others are outside of that. It's a big no. And you walk away from that instead of entertaining it out of the fear of being alone or being lonely. Um, so again, it, it's, it's very important. Now we talk about energy here. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm going to speak on something that I've, like I said, I've been seeing the past five years, um, <clears throat> where it seems like the roles are being reversed nowadays. I cannot tell you, um, how many times I've dealt with, and not just on a professional level, this is on a personal level as well, with family members, with friends that, um, you know, our standards have become so minimal that you are, or we are willing to embrace or deal with people that we know are below what we deserve. And when I say below, I'm not talking about economically or financially. I'm talking about just energy wise. Um, and the best example I can speak on is, for example, I cannot stress this enough. The past five years, I've noticed a major decline with the masculines um, becoming or taking on more of the feminine energy and the feminine energy becoming or taking on more of the energy of the masculine. Now, again, I'm talking about energy wise. Okay. I'm not talking about, I know some, some smart ass is going to come on here and be like, well, you know, as an example, um, you know, I'm gay or I'm lesbian. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking even even in a lesbian relationship or even in a, a gay relationship. Um, 
there is, we embody certain energies and even in those relationships there is a feminine and a masculine okay that's what we're talking about here energies um and when i say the masculine has become more feminine and the feminine has become more masculine when i look around and when i you know see this when it comes to dealing with clients when it comes to my profession when it comes to even on a personal level dealing with friends or family members it's like the woman is so willing to take care of the man and the man has become more feminine in the aspect of they're not really go-getters. They're not really motivated. Um, they're fine with the woman being the one to basically represent the family. And not that there's anything wrong with that. If you're okay with that, then that's fine. But obviously they're not because that's the reason why they come to me. And that is something that I've been seeing progressively, continuously growing. Um, and again, like I said, doesn't matter the type of relationship you're, you're in. There is a feminine and there is a masculine. And the thing about it, the way I see it from this perspective is that women are becoming the men that they wish they could find. Um, and you become so self-sufficient. You become so independent that you often get and i'm and i'm speaking on as an example um if if we're talking about a woman she becomes so self sufficient so independent so proactive about what she wants and her goals and her aspirations and she's making it happen but the thing about it is that there is a thin line between you know, being independent, being empowered, being for the women, and I'm for women, I've always have been, and I always will be. Um, but there's a fine line between that and like making that your whole personality. And what I mean by that is, you know, women that feel more empowered than their masculine uh, have a tendency of being more disrespectful or even degrading to their partner and the reason for that is again we're talking about energies when we're talking about energies and the feminine that should be feminine is more on the masculine and the masculine is more on the feminine the the woman innately has to have some type of admiration or respect for the partner and when they are not really doing anything and they're kind of just cruising by the relationship at some point you start to lose respect for your partner and that's where that's where I see the toxicity when we're talking about the feminine becoming more masculine to the point of you know having the need to yell or scream even in public to their partner to degrade them or embarrass them or whatever and the reason why that happens is because again they at that point they probably lost respect for that partner and the masculine being more on the feminine energy, they're more on the receiving mode. So they kind of expect the woman to be doing stuff that usually it would be the role of the man to do. Now, again, I've always been a very open-minded person. I am, you know, trying the best I can to not be, not ruffle those feathers. <laughs> But I do see that there has been a major decline in standards in people. Um, and the reason why these women that are highly independent, that are highly uh, proactive about, you know, their dreams and their aspirations, the moment they have a conversation with another masculine that is independent, that is highly motivated, that they don't find a connection and the reason for that is because they often find themselves being either intimidated or feeling very awkward because they're not used to dealing with masculine energy. I hope I hope that's making sense. Um, so what I'm saying is you get a highly independent person that is a feminine and you highly independent masculine. You put them together and you would expect for them to get along, right? <laughs> but it doesn't always work out that way. And the thing about that is that women have brought their standards so low that you're okay with your partner doing the bare minimum. And I'm not just saying like, I'm not saying all of you, I'm just saying that's what I've seen. That is what I've observed. 
throughout these five years. And, and I think that it is important. Again, this is why healing and doing shadow work is so important because in doing that, you will reconnect with yourself and learn and understand your worthiness and what you deserve and to not be settling for anything less. A lot of the times people say, I'm not going to settle for anything less. And then a person comes along that doesn't meet the criteria or doesn't have, you know, certain attributes that they're looking for in a partner. And they're willing to overlook that out of the fear that there may not be another one coming through. Do you get what I'm saying? There's this constant need or feeling to feel, um, to feel connected. And I think that the important process or the important thing here is to learn that when it comes to relationships and when it comes to finding a healthy, loving relationship is that you need to have a healthy, loving relationship with yourself first and above all. Um, only then will you be able to, like I said, attract that likeness. Um, you know, this is something that I highly speak about. And, and again, we're talking about energies. Uh, you could be in a, you know, um, you could be in a se same sex relationship or partnership. And the energy is, we're talking about energies. We're not talking about sex, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, and when I do give the, you know, the comparisons of what I've been seeing and what I've been experiencing is that we've had standards at some point, but people want to do the bare minimum nowadays. And because of that, people have become so accustomed and comfortable with that bare minimum. And we go back to that of the importance of shadow work and healing. Why? Because one of the things that I've experienced in this line of work is that, and I'm going to be honest, <clears throat> everyone is so cynical when it comes to love and romance. But the truth is that out of those that are the most cynical are the ones that the most want to experience true, healthy, loving relationships. Why is that? Because instead of healing, instead of doing shadow work, instead of taking self-responsibility to help ourselves be better people, um, instead of doing that, we walk around using others to get over others. And what you have is a society or a collective of people walking around that are completely hurt, devastated, that are broken down. And because they're not willing to do or put in the work to heal themselves, they go around and deal with other people that are the same or in the same plateau of not wanting to heal, not wanting to do self, you know, self healing and shadow work and self responsibility. And you have all of these people walking around hurt and you have them being cynical. Um, you have people, you, we have more of narcissistic people walking around because of that. Um, instead of doing the work. So what I'm saying is what I've seen is that as a collective, people have become more cynical when it comes to love and romance. And the reason for that is because they've been hurt. They've been betrayed. They haven't given themselves the time to heal or to do that shadow work. So they keep their guard so high that they're not willing to bring it down when it comes to dealing with someone new and the other person the same or the same scenario, they are hurt, they are extremely guarded and they're not willing to put bring the guard down. But yet the feeling of loneliness is what draws them together, right? And then they get themselves in a relationship or in a connection that I should say becomes a situationship. So that's why it's very important to, to do shadow work, to do healing before getting into a next relationship. The purpose of relationships is like I said, they all are here to teach us a lesson, to, to teach us something about ourselves, because ultimately that's what it is. And when you're willing to put in the work and you realize how important you are and you realize how worthy you are of experiencing what it is to be completely fulfilled or completely, you know, in a very loving, healthy, nurturing relationship, 
when you realize that you're worthy of that and you deserve that, you're not going to be willing to entertain yourself with anything less of that value. Um, and again, like I said, we, we live in a society where people, you know, walk around and they're cynical about it or, um, you know, being very disconnected from the reality of what really is and what we're experiencing collectively is the experience of feeling very disconnected from everyone. That's the reason why we are experiencing a lot of depression. We're experiencing a lot of, you know, addictions and alcoholism and, you know, even suicide. Uh, the reason for it is because we feel very disassociated, very disconnected from the world. And it's because you could be in a relationship for a whole year and doing the bare minimum in that relationship, whether it's you or your partner, and it gets to the point where you feel like you are lonely in that relationship. <clears throat> so I think it's very important to cultivate ourselves so that we can be better partners and so that we can also know our worth and to not allow anyone uh, moving forward to treat you anything less than what you deserve. And that's something very important. And I think it's something that um, people need to be more willing to embrace uh, because it's, you know, it's, it's very important. And what you notice through this process of, you know, whether you're trying to manifest or whether you're trying to heal and do your shadow work and put yourself together and empower yourself, you'll come out of it at the end knowing what you're willing and not willing to deal with anymore. And anything other than that, you pick up on that energy immediately. Um, you know, I can speak for myself. I've been um, on this journey. Primarily, I was focused in my career and my profession. And for a while there, I was like, mm, maybe I'm ready, you know, to date, maybe I'm not. And then, you know, um, pulling away, coming back, et cetera, right? <laughs> you realize the ones that are really willing to be all in. And sometimes you're not, and that's okay as well. But what I'm saying, it is important to know, because like I said, you pick up on energies uh, when you start to tune in more to who you are, when you start to listen to your intuition, just having a very simple conversation, not even that deep, you'll be able to find out and to pick up on people's intentions and their feelings. This is why it's so hard, you know, for a witch to date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I think that as time has progressed, obviously you start to date higher quality individuals. And I think that that's the ultimate goal, right? Um, so yeah, I hope that this gives you some type of insight. I hope it encourages you, uh, maybe even, you know, pushes a little bit to think a little bit more about what, it, when it comes to relationships and the importance that every relationship you get yourself into speaks more about you than the person, um, because it is teaching you something. And ultimately the teaching is always about us, um, what we are willing to deal with and what we're not and what we should be willing to deal with, um, so yeah, I hope that you take something from this. Comment, like, share. Let me know what you guys think. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Till then, bye.